Hello everyone, this is Andrew at Crown Academy of English. Today we are doing a lesson about commas. So let's start. Let's look at the vocative case. The vocative case is used to address someone directly. We use a comma to separate the vocative case from the rest of the speech. Example. Mark, please tidy your bedroom. So, Mark, this is the vocative case. So, we are addressing Mark directly. We are talking to Mark directly and we are asking him to tidy his bedroom. And so, we use the comma to separate the vocative case from the rest of the speech. And we can also put the person at the end of the sentence. Please tidy your bedroom, Mark. Please tidy your bedroom, Mark. So this is exactly the same as this. So the meaning is the same. And so here we can see the comma at the end of the speech and before the vocative case. Notice how we write a comma. It is a very small diagonal line at the bottom of the letter, at the bottom of the line. It is in fact on the line. And after the comma, there is a space before the next letter. And here is an example to show the real importance of commas. Let's eat, Grandma. So this means we are simply telling Grandma that we want to eat. Grandma is the vocative. We are talking to Grandma. But without a comma, let's eat, Grandma. And in fact, this means that we are going to eat, Grandma. <laughs> so, as you can see, the meaning is very different. Um, this is grammatically correct, but the meaning is completely different. So, commas are very, very important in English. In fact, we can say commas save lives. So let's carry on. Very quickly, before I continue with the lesson, I strongly recommend this complete IELTS online course. It is an excellent way to prepare for the IELTS exam. And for more information, click the link on the screen. Okay? And the link is also in the description of this video. Okay? Now let's continue with the lesson about commas. Commas for lists. We use commas to separate a list of items places, things, ideas, etc. Let's look at a sentence without commas. Jane is going to visit London and Paris and Rome and Madrid. This is bad style because we are repeating the word and. We've got and three times. So it's it's not good. It's very bad English. So we need commas. So with commas, Jane is going to visit London, Paris, Rome and Madrid. Now this is correct. So in fact the comma it represents a pause in the speech. 
So it helps us slow down between each item in the list. Another example, I played tennis, washed my car and watched TV. The word and separates the last two items in the list. So the last two items in this list are Rome, Madrid. So for these two, we use the word and to separate them. And here, the last two items are washed my car, watch TV, and separates them. So there is no comma before and at the end of the list. Okay, so um, here after Rome, we do not put a comma. Okay, we do not put a comma. And here, um, after car and before and, we do not put a comma. This is a British English rule. This is the style of British English. American English, there is a comma before and at the end of the list. Example in American English. Jane is going to visit London, Paris, Rome and Madrid. So American English, they do put a comma here. This comma has a special name. It is called the Oxford comma. The Oxford comma. So the general rule is in British English, we do not write the Oxford comma and the, in American English, they do write an Oxford comma. Adjectives after a noun. We always use commas for three or more adjectives after a noun. The actor is tall, slim and handsome. So these are the three adjectives and we treat them exactly like a list. So it's the same rules for the list. We have um, a comma here, we have the word and for the last two items and there's no comma. Okay, so this is for adjectives after a noun. Adjectives before a noun. When the order of the adjectives before a noun is not fixed, we use commas. And when the order of adjectives is not fixed, it is because the adjectives give the same type of information. It's the same category of adjective. Therefore, the position is not fixed. Example. A slim, tall woman is crossing the road. So this is correct. Um, and it is correct because these two adjectives, slim and tall, they give the same type of information. It is about the size and physical appearance of the woman. So the position is not fixed. Therefore, we can also say or write a tall, slim woman is crossing the road. So we can change the order if we want and it is still grammatically correct with a comma. However, we do not use commas when the order of adjectives is fixed. And the order is fixed when the adjectives give different types of information. Example. 
He drives a small red Italian car. This is correct. We do not use commas because the position of these adjectives is fixed because they give different types of information. This one is size, this is colour, and this is nationality. So this is wrong. This is wrong because we have used commas here. Okay? Discourse markers. Discourse markers connect, organise and manage what we say or write. They also express attitude. Here are some common examples. Anyway, well, firstly, furthermore, in addition, in conclusion, moreover, surprisingly. And we usually use a comma after a discourse marker at the start of a sentence. Example. Anyway, I'm too tired to go out tonight. So after anyway, there is a comma to represent a pause before the rest of the sentence. Surprisingly, Mark failed his driving test. Again, we have a comma here. And notice how surprisingly this word expresses attitude. It expresses the attitude of the person speaking. It tells us that our attitude is that we are surprised that Mark failed his driving test. Perhaps we were expecting him to pass the driving test. So it expresses attitude. Non-defining relative clauses. Oxford Street, which is in London, is closed today. Notice how I paused when I said street. I said Oxford Street, which is in London, is closed today. So there was a pause here and a pause here. Which is in London is a non-defining relative clause. It gives us non-essential information about Oxford Street. So it is telling us that Oxford Street is in London. But the main sentence is Oxford Street is closed today. Therefore, we separate the clause from the main sentence with commas. Direct speech very important for commas. Mark said, I am going to London. So here is a comma. So the rule is, if the reporting clause is before the direct speech, then we write a comma before the direct speech. So this is the reporting clause. Mark said. If this is at the beginning, then we write a comma before the direct speech here. I am going to New York, Jane said. If the reporting clause is after the direct speech, if it is here, then we write a comma before the closing inverted commas. So the comma is here. It is at the end of the direct speech before the in inverted comma. Okay? 
conditionals starting with if clauses. We use commas for conditionals that start with an if clause. Example. If it rains, I will take my umbrella. So we have an if clause at the start of a sentence, at the start of the conditional. Therefore, we must separate it with a comma. But we do not use commas for conditionals that end with an if clause. So we can also say, I will take my umbrella if it rains. So this time we have decided to write the if clause at the end of the sentence. And in this case, we do not write a comma. So this is correct. And of course, this is correct also. To emphasize contrast, we use commas to emphasize a contrasting idea or subject. The comma forces a pause. And the pause helps us to separate contrasting ideas. Words that often express contrast are words like unlike, never, not, and there are many others. Mark, unlike Jane, is a fast runner. So this means that Mark is a fast runner, but Jane is not a fast runner. So we use the commas to separate the contrasting idea. This is my phone, not yours. Do you, do you hear the pause? So by pausing, it emphasizes um, the contrast. This is my phone, not yours. So we really emphasize the contrast that, no, this is not your phone, it is my phone. Okay? Numbers. Very important, very common. When we are writing numbers as digits, then we use commas to separate the thousands. I'm sure you have already seen this. So here is a million dollars. And we write it like this. There is a one, then a comma, then we have three zeros and a comma, and then three zeros. So this represents one million dollars. So there is a comma to separate the thousands and then a hundred thousand and there would be another comma here if it was a billion. Okay, so every every three zeros there is a comma to separate them. Another example there are twenty six thousand three hundred students enrolled at Sheffield University. So we have a comma to separate um, the thousands. So in words, this represents 26,300. Okay? So there we are. That is the end of the lesson. Again, I strongly recommend this complete IELTS online course. It is an excellent way to prepare for the IELTS exam. For more information, click the link on the screen.